In this video, we're going to look at some basics of momentum and impulse and kind of introduce them to new physics students. So to start off with, momentum is symbolized with this lowercase letter p because obviously m usually stands for mass. So momentum is lowercase letter p and it's simply equal to the product of, um, of mass times an object's velocity. And we'll talk about where this concept comes from here in just a moment. The units of momentum, since we have a mass times a, a velocity, it's going to be a mass unit times a velocity unit. And velocity is distance divided by time. And so in the KMS, kilogram meter second system, System, that would be kilogram meters per second. So where does this come from? Where's this idea of the product of mass and velocity coming from? Well, it's actually just a, a reconceptualization of uh, Newton's laws. We're going to start with F equals ma, and we're going to use the definition of acceleration, which is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So we're going to rewrite this, and so we have F is equal to mass times acceleration, but instead of acceleration, I'm going to write in the change in velocity divided by the change in time. We're then going to multiply the change in time over here to the other side. And so we get F delta T is equal to, and since we're dealing with a change in velocity, it's always the final velocity. So mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity. And basically, if something's initial velocity is zero, you just get rid of that last term there, and you can just have F delta T is equal to MVF. But the way it's mostly symbolized is you have F delta T is equal to M delta V. Then this F delta T term over here is what's referred to as an impulse. You have a force pushing or pulling on something for an amount of time that generates a change in speed and that, that's called an impulse part and that's equal to the change in momentum. Uh, change in momentum, I mean, hopefully you're not losing mass of something, but we'll explore a situation where that's a possibility. And so you're just doing changes in velocities here because usually the momentum is going to stay the same. All right, so the force times the time, you might think, well, force is in newtons, time is in seconds. So newton seconds would be a good unit to use. And yeah, it's used, not often, but sometimes you'll see that used as a newton second. But it's exactly the same thing as a kilogram meter per second. Newton second, kilogram meter per second, same, same things. Let's see some applications of this, like in fast forward or, or high speed photography here. Here we have a photograph of a baseball player striking a baseball. That is obviously producing a force for a short period of time. Now you don't think about what's happening during that interaction because that interaction, that change in time, this delta T part is usually extremely small. But here you see the, deform the deformation of a baseball here undergoing that, that high force. And of course it happens really, really fast. The ball will return to its, to its original shape. Here we have the same thing except in golf ball form. Here you have when the club, this iron, strikes the golf ball, you have a major deformation of the golf ball. And you don't usually see that uh, in normal life because this happens in such a small amount of time. All right, so the impulse momentum theorem is what F delta T is equal to delta P is. And I've expanded it out here. You've got the force times the change in time is equal to uh, MVF minus MVI, final speed minus initial speed. This assumes a constant force is acting, not always super realistic, but it also s assumes small time intervals. It doesn't have to. You know, the force could be variable, the time interval could be large, uh, but then you have other issues then uh, when you do calculations with this, because you got to know how does the force vary, and then you get into calculus issues with those various problems. So we're going to be kind of assuming for most problems that the force is going to be constant, which is actually true over very short time periods of somewhere around 0 0.01 seconds or 0 0.1 seconds uh, in that neighborhood because there's just not enough time for the force to vary that much. So that's our idea on here. Uh, we will spend some time tomorrow discussing uh, some problems. Today was just an introduction to the concept. Thank you.